Hey everybody, it's Chris from Out West with Chris, and I'm back today to talk to you about this. This is the Fire Boss. Um, Boss stands for Bug Out Survival Supplement. I recently uploaded a video where I went over the Hunting and Fishing Boss. So similar concept, but different contents. This is the Fire Boss. So this little Bug Out Survival Supplement um, pouch or kit, whatever you want to call it, focuses on fire and in a survival situation, you can never have too many ways to start fire, um, at least in my opinion. So there's gonna be all sorts of items in this little Mylar pouch. This is a 33 piece kit, and this will retail for about $25. I got this on a pre-order for $20 through Stanford Outdoor Supply, and those are the folks that are putting these boss kits together. I think these are a great idea. I think they're great for people who, you know, are just getting into getting a bug out bag or an emergency kit, um, you know, that type of thing together. This is gonna jumpstart you. If you've been on the fence thinking, you know, I really should have a kit together in case there's, you know, a big storm or a hurricane or an earthquake, these kits are gonna be really useful in, you know, getting you know, good amount of gear that you're gonna need right off the bat. And for, for those of you that have, um, you know, a ton of experience in survival and prepping, you know, there could be some use for you. You know, take a look at what's inside. Most likely you've got most of your bases covered, but as they say, two is one and one is none. So, you know, a little bit of redundancy in some of your kits in, in these small, compact, lightweight pouches you know, isn't gonna hurt you. I have a friend that was putting together a bug out bag, survival type bag. It was gonna be kind of an all in one thing as she was just getting started. And I looked at it, she asked me for her, you know, for my opinions on the contents. She had some, you know, emergency water pouches, some food, and a couple of other items, a, you know, a knife, and um, I think a lighter was her fire method. So that's a decent start. It's better than nothing. But I felt like she could use, um, you know, these kits. So I actually gave her the fishing and hunting boss. But I'm also probably going to give her this one um, just so that she is equipped. And for $20, you know, it's not that much of an expense for all of the gear you're going to get in here. All right, let's dig in and take a look at what you get in this 33-piece kit. The Fire Boss Bug Out Survival Supplement. So, like I mentioned before, this is the Fire Boss 33 piece fire starting kit. It comes really well packed in here. One of the first things you'll notice is this little informational pamphlet, and it's going to talk about a variety of different topics. It is on right in the rain paper. Um, you know, you get info on a bow and drill method, um, that type of stuff. So, a uh, good little kit, something that you want to keep in there for reference. First thing you're going to notice is you get a lighter, and the lighter comes in a Ziploc bag. That's nice. Um, it also comes with this, there's a little wire uh, wrapped around it, and that is that wires to keep this from being pushed down and, and letting out um, your fuel. So, nice little touch. Next thing is some steel wool. So steel wool can be used with batteries to start fire. You just stick them to the different terminals and you'll get sparks and embers and then you'll be able to you know throw it on some tinder and um, use that ember to um, get going. So, kinda cool. You also get some char cloth. And let's take a look at this char cloth. Feels like it's pretty heavy duty. Um, yeah, pretty decent thickness on that char cloth. So definitely something you could probably catch a, a spark with and get an ember going. In the kit you get two of these um, tea lights, tea candles. These are just small little candles, nothing major. You get a ferro rod and a striker. And undo that. You 
So looks like a decent ferro rod. Um, I'm not gonna say this is my favorite, but you can definitely throw some sparks. It seems like the sparks are pretty short lived on this one. So something to keep in mind, but you know, I'm sure you can get, uh, get something lit, you know, if you had some jute twine, which you do in this kit. Um, I don't think this is a bad ferro rod, um, pretty thick, but I'm just kind of noticing that the sparks uh, fizzle out a little bit quick. So here you have a little magnifier and, you know, using a, a lens is a definite way to start fire, to get an ember. Um, I remember when I was a, a youngster in Boy Scouts, that was one of the methods we had to learn was how to start a fire with a lens um, or a magnifying glass or, you know, pretty much any good optical lens, you know, you can use to start a fire. Something that's just gonna harness that light, shoot it down on something dry, get it smoking, um, get an ember going, and then um, utilize that ember with uh, your tinder. So nice that they have multiple ways in here to start a fire. You get a box of matches in this Ziploc bag. These are waterproof matches. Um, it looks like they have a, a little striking surface right here as well. I'm not gonna open these up. Um, that's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. These are from UCO. So these are fire assist magnesium capsules. And the deal with these little dudes is they're filled with um, magnesium powder. And what you do is you break these open and I'm not gonna do it here cause you know, it'll, it'll mess up my tabletop, but you break these open, pour it out in an area, get your tinder nice and close by, go ahead and use your ferrule rod to get a spark on this stuff and it's gonna, it's gonna light up. And then you throw your tinder onto that little pile of it and you're gonna, your fire is gonna take off. I'm really excited to try these out, see how they do. And something like this would be great if it's wet out, you know, if it's, if you're gonna need some sustained energy to get your tinder going. So don't just waste them, you know, if you're just trying to start a fire in perfect conditions, you know. Um, use these when it's, you know, a bit breezy or, you know, it's a little bit wet outside. So here you get some fatwood. Uh, fatwood is typically from pine trees and it's the, the heartwood that's um, typically soaked in, soaked in a pine resin. Um, sometimes it's naturally, you know, resiny parts of the tree, but it's extremely flammable. And I'm looking forward to, you know, demonstrating this. Take your knife and just shave off some nice small pieces, get them in a pile and, you know, spark that. So pretty cool. This is my gonna be my first time messing with that wood, and I'm excited to, to check it out, play with it a little bit, and if I like it, I'm definitely gonna order some more. A good amount there too. It says you get one ounce of it, um, but it seems like there might be a little bit more than an ounce. You also get some foil paper. You could use something like this to start a fire on if the ground is really wet. You could put your tinder, your fatwood shavings kind of in this area, you know, hold it in there um, and then spark it and, you know, utilize that. You could also utilize this for simple stuff like in a survival situation for signaling. Um, this would be great for that, actually. So, you know, maybe you don't want to burn this right away if you or in an emergency survival situation if you're lost and you need to signal for somebody, something like that, um, it could be pretty helpful. So this is a pretty cool item to have in here. This is a pretty heavy duty pencil sharpener. You know, not a huge opening, but some of these fatwood sticks you could stick in. And uh, basically what this is for is to take twigs and just make, um, tinder out of it. Look at that. See, this is making some really good little fine pieces of fatwood tinder 
just shaving it off like this. And you could do this with small twigs just to get some really thin pieces if you had some dry little twigs laying around. That's pretty cool actually. So there you go, you got some fat wood right here. A little pencil sharpener. Never really thought about throwing a pencil sharpener into a kit, but it makes sense when you really think about it. And this pencil sharpener is pretty nice. It feels like it's made out of a, a metal, a lightweight metal, of course, but you know, easy to grip. That's pretty cool. Next you get uh, these cotton tinder tabs. So these are gonna be some cotton and I'm guessing that they're impregnated with some sort of uh, you know product that's gonna help a, a spark take on them. They smell like they're impregnated. And what you would do with these is rough them up. Um, you know, bend them out, take your knife over them, rough them up so that there's more surface area for a spark to, to catch on. And then uh, use your ferrule rod and strike it and then that's gonna start a little flame. And after you get a flame going, you throw your, your kindling on and you're off to the races. So you get six of these in here. Again, in a nice little Ziploc bag so they can stay dry. Here you get 10 feet of jute twine. And jute twine is fast becoming one of my favorite products because it's just versatile. Um, jute twine on its own, if you take a little bit of this and you rough it up with a knife or even just your hands, I mean, you can start a fire pretty easily with jute twine. And then the fact that it's cordage, you know, is just a, a double extra helping of awesomeness. It's not gonna be your most uh, reliable cordage. But if you're building a shelter and you need to lash something, jute twine's gonna work. If you need it to be stronger, thicker, you can always braid it. So, you know, jute twine is something that I keep um, quite a bit of actually. So right here is a waterproof tinder ball. This is wet fire, fire starting tinder. So what you do is you take this little product, this little ball, I guess they call it, it's not really a ball, but you take this and you shave stuff off um, into a pile, you get some shavings, scrape it off with your knife, um, put it in a pile, and then spark it with a ferrule rod. Or, you know, if you wanna use a flint, you can use flint, but spark it and it'll take off. It's supposed to work really good in, you know, wet conditions. So once again, it's a wet fire, fire starting tinder. Pretty neat. Here you get um, like a little wire saw and these things, uh, you know, they're, they're not super duper reliable, but in a pinch, they'll work. They break. This one looks to be fairly decently made, but uh, definitely something that you can use to process wood. And it's gonna work on small branches. You're not gonna be able to cut anything that's super large, just because uh, it'll take you forever and this will probably break before you get through it. But for smaller pieces of wood, um, definitely usable. So you also have this Kevlar thread in the packet. It says it's about six feet. And the Kevlar thread is gonna work really well for a bow and drill. Um, I'm not an expert at bow and drill method for certain fires. Something that I definitely need to work on and get better at. And yeah, so the Kevlar thread is you know, it's strong, it's durable, can stand up to temperatures and a lot of friction, which is what you're generating when you're using a bow drill method. So good to have this in a kit. So here you got a bearing and the bearing can be used with the bow and a drill method. You could use this, hold it in the palm of your hand and you know, basically have that there. It's gonna reduce the friction, suppose, I suppose it could you know, make it easier uh, to get an ember. Like I said before, when we were talking about the Kevlar thread, I am not an expert at bow and drill method. Um, something I do need to work on. One of the last items is this little folding knife. 
Nothing very fancy about this, uh, but it is a knife. You can use it to shave your fat wood. You can use it for some smaller tasks. But if you didn't have a knife and all you had was this fire boss, you'd be happy that this knife was in there. Quite a bit of stuff in here. Lots of different ways to start fire. Lots of ways to you know, get your fire going and stay warm. So over the next couple of weeks, I've been planning on working with my kids on some fire starting um, practice, getting, getting them trained up on different ways that they can start a fire. I think it's important to teach kids survival skills early, you know, teach them respect for fire, you know, that type of thing, but also get them acquainted with it. You know, you don't want a kid to be stuck on their own in a survival situation and not have any skills. Um, if they have the tools, but they don't know how to use them, um, that's not gonna do any good. So my plan is to use some of these items to help teach my kids um, some fire starting methods over the next few weeks. And then I'm gonna package all these up, give it to my friend and let her enhance her bug out bag with these items. And I'll probably order one of these for myself because this kit, it's got some pretty good stuff in it. All right, everybody, that was the Fire Boss Bug Out Survival Supplements from Stanford Outdoor Supply. I think that these kits are pretty cool and I'm excited to get my hands on one. Like I said before, I'm gonna be teaching my kids and then I'm gonna pass this on to a friend of mine. Maybe I'll just order my friend um, a whole new um, pouch, one that hasn't been messed with. I think that might be better. Just wanna say thank you all for watching the video. Everybody who's subscribed, I really appreciate y'all. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe. And as always, thanks for getting out west with Chris.